Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to add an internal charger to your Jumper T18. Personally, I think it was a poor design decision to leave external charging off of the Jumper T18, but the reality is it's not that hard to add and only cost a few dollars. I'll put links to the parts I'm going to use in my description. Those are Amazon affiliate links, so I would appreciate it if you use those Amazon affiliate links because if you do, the channel gets a little kickback and it costs you nothing. It's all paid for by Amazon. All right, let's get into it. This is a two cell battery management system for lithium batteries. They're just a few dollars. And then you'll need a DC input jack. I used a 2.1 millimeter internal diameter plug for mine. One of the key things that I looked for was I wanted it as skinny as possible on the outside of the radio. This flange is the thinnest one that I could find. I just wanted that to be as skinny as I could make it. The Jumper T18 has an 8.4 volt input limit, so I found an 8.4 volt one amp power brick to use on my project. I'd also recommend a multimeter so you can test things before you plug them in and let the magic smoke out of your radio. I've also got my Toolkit RC M8S that I'll be using as a power supply for testing. All right, let's get started. Okay, it starts with disassembly of the radio. Let's take the battery out first. Next, we'll remove the back and side panels. There are six screws on the back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go ahead and take all six of those out. And then finally remove the two hex head screws holding the antenna mounting plate on the top. Okay, with all those screws removed, the back plate should just pop right off. In prior versions of the jumper, the power leads were easier to get to than they are on the T18. In order to get access to the power leads in a non-destructive way, we've got to take the main board out and flip it over. I did check these pins for power with the battery plugged in, but they are producing nothing with the radio off, so that's not going to work. Next, we'll disconnect the scroll wheel. So I'm going to remove the haptic wire. The ribbon cable is removed by popping up this black clamp. All I did was slide a little screwdriver in there and just give it a lift straight up and that loosens the clamp holding the ribbon cable in. Before you go any further, it'd be a really good idea to take a photograph of this so you have an idea how to reconnect all these wires because those are all coming off. It looks like to avoid any entanglements, the best thing to do is to pop one of these gimbals out because the pivot mechanism down here on the left just interferes on both sides with that main board coming completely free. Okay, with that out of the way, the main board is free. All right, with the main board out, we can get to what we're after. This is the power connector. The left-hand side is positive, the right-hand side is negative, and the middle is going to be used for our balance lead. So now, remember when you flip this over, that's backwards. Red will be on the right. There's positive, there's ground, and there's the balance lead. All right, with my leads tinned up, I'm just gonna touch them to the, the pins on the back of the power adapter. Okay, the next thing we do before we button this back up is let's check for continuity. We definitely do not want to see continuity on these leads. None there and none there. So that means I didn't change the electrical situation on the board. Let's put our leads on the ends of these wires with the battery plugged in and check for volts. And there we go, we've got 8.2 volts on the voltmeter. So I've got the first lead and the last lead and that's where I'm checking. So that looks good. That means we've got power to this, to our extension leads. That's the hardest part of the job. Now let's put the main board back in the radio.
Okay, we're right back where we started from, except now we've got three leads coming off of the power plug. Let's cover what the pads on this battery management circuit do. There's a B plus, a B minus, and a BM. The B plus will go to our red lead on the power plug. The B minus will go to the far right ground lead, that's this one on the power plug. And then the BM pad will get this middle lead, and that's the balance lead. So let's get this tinned up and soldered together. Okay, center lead is on the BM pad, the positive lead is on B plus, and the negative lead, that's the one all the way over here on the far right, is on the B minus pad. Now I'm gonna plug the battery in and make sure nothing smokes. Everything looks good so far. I'm gonna put my positive lead on B plus and my negative lead on the first cell, and I've got 4.1, that's correct. I'm gonna put my negative lead on the second cell and I've got 8.2, that's correct. And I see no smoke, which is also a win. Okay, next up is to solder on our connections for the external jack. Before I go any further, I'm gonna connect up my toolkit M8S power supply, and I wanna just check and see when I turn voltage on going the other direction that we get no smoke. And we see, I see none. You can see I've got it set to 7.2 volts at half an amp. I'm gonna take a measurement on the power leads in the radio to make sure I see the same thing, 7.2 volts inside. And I do, 7.2 volts. That looks good, no smoke, 7.2 volts on the battery pins. It's time to test it. I'm gonna plug the battery in and just set it aside. I'm gonna reconnect my power supply. And you can see on the power supply, I see 8.1 volts. I've set it to 8.4 volts and I'm hitting start. Okay, that looks good. Now the next thing to do is to connect the power jack and install the power jack into the radio. Nice and easy. Last thing you wanna do is drive a drill bit into your main board or your LCD. Might have to spend a little time deburring your hole so you're Barrel jack fits in there okay. Okay, I'm done drilling out my hole and I verified that my power jack fits. I wanna warn you, I did have a casualty of war though. I lost one of my plastic standoffs inside the case. There's the lead on the back that's supposed to be the center pin and I'm just gonna do a continuity check. Yeah, so that center pin is hot. The last thing I want to do is check polarity on my plug. So I'm going to put my positive lead on the inside and just touch the outside. And there we go, 8.3 volts. So the polarity is correct. Positive is on the inside, negative is on the outside. In case you're wondering what it looks like if it's reversed, if you do that, you should see a negative. You see that negative sign right there? Negative 8.3, that would be reverse polarity. This one with the rivet is the hot lead and both of these are ground. You can use either one of those that you want. I've pre-tinned my leads on my power jack. Now I'm gonna insert it into the radio. And before you solder your wires on, make sure you put your locking nut on the barrel jack. All right, I've got my power jack plugged in and I'm gonna take a voltage reading on the pins inside. Notice there's no battery and I've got 7.1 all right, so I've got positive voltage there. Now I can plug in a battery and we'll see what happens.
Battery's plugged in, and I'm just going to measure these two leads, and I see 8.25. So there's a load. There's a load on the circuit. That's for sure. 8.2. All right. I'm going to go ahead and button this up, and then I'll run a charge cycle, and we'll wrap up the video. I had to spend a little time with cable management, but this layout seems to work okay. I put a little double-sided tape on the back of the BMS board and just stuck it on the jog dial. All right, there we go. There's my charging jack. Almost looks like it came with the radio that way. Time to power it up and check everything out. That's a good sign. I'm going to check my channel monitor, so I want to make sure that all of my gimbals work. And I do have full deflection, 1 to 100, 1 to 100, so everything looks good there. And we'll check the pots. That looks good. Sliders look good. Trims look good. All right. All of my controls look good. My audio sounds good. Okay, now I want to check my switches and make sure they're all working correctly. So the way we do that is press the system button and then long press page twice. That brings us to hardware calibration and I'll roll the jog wheel left and that brings me to switches, press once. I'll start with the page down key and I'm looking on the left hand side here. So page down, I got a one, enter, I got a one, model, one, return, one, tele, one, system one, that's all good. I'm gonna check all of my switches, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. No I and J on this one. And I'll check the trims. There's four up and down. Trim one up and down. Trim center. Three up and down. Two up and down. Five up and down. Six up and down. So all the physical controls work. Well, there's only one thing left to do. And that's plug it in. Here we go. All right, guys, that's all I've got on how to install an internal charging circuit on a Jumper T18. I hope you liked the video. If you did, your subscription would be very welcome. And for those of you who are already subscribed to the channel, you know what to do. Just keep commenting, leave a like, share the video, and don't forget to check out my affiliate links in the description. I've got the parts for this modification in that list. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.